Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for um, inviting me to speak. <coughs> um, I am going to talk to you today about um, active virusomes. We were um, established about 18 months ago. We're a, a, a UK R&D company at the moment. I'm going to tell you about what active virusomes are and to tell you about the um, technology platform itself. Finally, I am going to um, show you very quickly some results that we've had from the last year of work and tell you about our plans for, for next steps. So, I and my co-founder um, founded Activirosomes to develop effective, affordable and safe obviously, vaccines and virotherapies to solve urgent and global health needs. Um, and our vision is very much the, on the affordable line. Um, my colleague um, Vishwas Joshi was the inventor of the active virosomes technology. He uh, is based, he's an Indian scientist, um, virologist and molecular biologist. And um, he discovered, he invented the technology from his own company, Seagull Biosolutions. And his, his vision was always to make therapies, um, medicines affordable to the common man in India and elsewhere. And um, Active Virusomes very much takes on that vision and that, that determination as well. Um, so, Active Virusomes are um, antigens, vaccine antigens. They have other uses, which maybe I'll explain at the end if I have time. Um, they have significant advantages over other vaccine technologies, both traditional and, and newer, um, that, that address the, the problems that face all drug, de drug development, but particularly responses against urgent issues, um, development time, cost and risk. We can develop new vaccine candidates within three to four months. Uh, the cost of development of an active virusome is well under a million dollars. Um, they are based at the moment on, the, we're using the um, measles vaccine virus as the um, vector at the moment. So they're potent stimulators of immunity. Um, the, the, um, the, the, uh, the, the method by which the active virusomes are formed is it use, use the biology of, of measles. Um, so there is no need to grow any viruses at all. Um, Vishwas's lab is, 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 a, is a proper R&D lab, but there are no containment facilities because there are no need. Um, I'll show you how they're made in a minute, but um, they are entirely safe. Uh, the platform is robust. They use a, a cassette of antigens in the construction which gives us the capability of production of multivalent vaccines and there is room to, to incorporate maybe up to four or five antigens or other components. And finally, because, because this is based on the measles platform, um, the, the cost of production is, is really low. So without going into the compare and contrast, there's a lot of benefits there already. Um, the, um, the way they work is um, the, the active virusome uh, carries, it is a, if you like, a designer virus, but a virus that can't reproduce itself because it hasn't got the genes. It um, carries coding for the, the target antigen, so the, the thing that you want to, the, um, the virus that you want to protect against, into the cell, so when you, when you are vaccinated, um, the, the, um, the genes are carried into the cell, they're expressed, they're displayed on the cell surface, um, and that's it. So they're not only producing the, um, the antigen on the cell surface, stimulating immune response, um, but they're also uh, producing a, a sort of a, a longer-lived depot effect because of the, um, the, the, the activity of the virusome within the cell itself. The technology incorporates only vaccine-relevant genes. Um, we can incorporate certain measles genes should we choose to, and sometimes that's useful to boost the immune response. 
Um, but in general, it's only the vaccine-relevant genes. And as I say, they cannot cause disease, either measles or the, the target antigen, because the, vir the, uh, the active virusome just simply does not carry the genes that, it, that you need to do that. The, um, the production system is, is just amazingly simple. Um, there are two plasmids, um, so I was saying that we don't need to handle viruses. Um, if, there was, if we were dealing with a new outbreak, all we need is the, the sequence of the virus. We don't need to grow the virus, culture isn't needed. Um, we identify the antigenic sequence that we want to use, um, prepare um, the, the, the um, seed, uh, seed, seed DNAs, DNAs for that, um, construct a cloning plasmid, incorporating those, and co-transfect that with the help of plasmid into, um, we're using a Vero cell line. Um, after, I think it's seven days of incubation, um, the, the, um, the, the mixture is, is filtered and uh, we're able to collect the active virusomes. Uh, we go through a, a, a characterized a, a checking process, which I've, I've not included, but it's, it's a, a standard process, including visualization, electron microscopy, um, and um, just other methods of checking that we have actually got active virusomes in the mix. And um, then they, they are ready, ready to go. Um, we were, um, we've completed um, proof of, uh, preclinical proof of concept of, of, I think, four or five vaccine candidates now, um, not including all the, the dengue um, serotypes that, that Vishwas has worked on. Um, the, the technology platform itself was developed first, um, was, was sort of developed and evolved first um, when Vishwas was working on dengue vaccine. Um, that was funded by the Gates Foundation and the, the, um, the government of India. Um, he has shown proof of concept of the four, um, I believe the four serotypes and is working to produce maybe a multivalent um, candidate vaccine before going any further. However, um, things took a, took a real boost at the beginning of last year when we were awarded half a million pounds from, um, uh, as an SPRI contract here in the UK um, to work on um, three vaccine candidates to proof of concept stage. Those are um, Zika, Chikungunya and Ebola. And I'll, I'll show you some of the results now. Um, Zika and Ebola have had a lot of publicity. Um, the, main, the main, and, and there, are, you know, there are products in, in um, clinical trials, and so, so there are with, with chikungunya as well. The main problem with Zika seems to be the uh, effects on, um, on, on um, the, the, the fetus and so on. So um, we're quite, quite interested by the fact that we can use our multivalent platform to potentially put in, um, as, as the research develops to understand how these effects are caused, um, it is not out of the question, and we certainly think it would be um, feasible to put in a, a, maybe a candidate to reduce those effects um, into our multivalent platform alongside the Zika antigens. Um, chikungunya is one that, <laughs> If you've, lived, you know, if you've lived in the UK all your life, the chances are you've never heard of. Um, but it affects people right across, right across the, um, the, the, the tropics and certainly right across India. It's, you know, it's monsoon season at the moment and people are worried about catching chikungunya as well as the, the other um, viral infections. They're all <coughs> carried by the same mosquito. Um, lots of mosquitoes around. Now it's raining and there's puddles. Um, and um, although many people have been infected and, and don't even know about it, um, for the unfortunate significant minority, um, they suffer extreme pain, um, 
during the acute infection, which, which sometimes never goes away, and vulnerable parts of the population die. In fact, I was, I was there last week with my collaborators and um, I met for the first time someone that told me his father had just died from chikungunya and it really brings it home to you. Um, anyway, I will show you the, 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 the proof of concept study that we did was to demonstrate the platform um, for the, the um, Department of Health here in the UK. Um, we were able to evaluate the immunogenicity of the candidates and develop, um, demonstrate whether they produced a, an immune response, and they did, um, determine their efficacy and look at a couple of ways of production of, of divalent um, vaccine formulations, which we did as well. Um, just to say, we, we, ca we constructed seven um, vaccine candidates and, um, in, in the course of a year, and did all that testing, and it cost um, 0.45 million uh, of a million pounds. And really, that demonstrates the, the 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 efficiency, the fact that we can respond flexibly to um, vaccine production, and the great value for money as well. Um, I'm just going to go really quickly through and show you the data, um, and I'm just going to show you the data for um, our chikungunya and our Zika um, our vaccines. Um, the Ebola requires more work, um, and I don't have the data ready to show you, so that's, that's the reason for that. Um, but in both cases, um, we, we made two different chukungunya um, candidates uh, to respond to just things that became obvious do, during the construction. Um, and we also constructed a, a divalent chikungunya Zika um, vaccine. Um, they are spread by the same mosquito, the symptoms are somewhat similar, therefore it makes sense that if we can, um, we're vaccinating against both at once. Um, and we were able to show that the, um, both vaccines, and you can see the data for yourselves, um, produce um, st are stimulating of CD4 and um, CD8 T cells. Um, I would also say that there, there has been no optimization of these vaccine candidates at all. Um, this was proof of concept, and from here we go on into the, the major characterization and optimization stage. We were able to also show humoral immunity. Um, they all produced both, um, both of the chikungunya, the Zika, and the divalent um, produced antibodies to the respective antigens. Uh, we saw some differences in the um, potency, and that will, again, be looked into more. And um, we, we um, took an, like an independent assessment of it um, using a, a pseudovirus neutralization assay, um, to two different ones, actually, one in, in Vishwas's lab and one in um, um, the, the University of Sussex, and were able to show uh, the same effects. Finally, on to the, um, the animal protection. Um, chikungunya is a, is a category three. Um, we had no end of trouble finding um, a, a place that could undertake the, the animal protection. So we did an indirect method. Um, we, um, in, in India, um, we got a local isolate and um, infected mice by a subcutaneous route. And then we determined the RNA levels um, by RT, um, QRT PCR, um, we saw very clearly that there was an effect um, of the the um, on the animals that had had the vaccine administered. And uh, the Zika protection assay, <laughs> very a very short-lived uh, protection was observed. Um, the immunisation schedule was. It's to say it was suboptimal is putting it mildly um, for reasons that if I went into would just get me too excited. Um, but um, what we are very pleased with is the fact that we did see, despite the, you know, all the problems with, the, um, with, the, with the, the protection assay, we did see a small amount of, of um, protection. And that, again, encourages us to... Um, repeat the study and then go into a, a, an optimization phase. So, in summary, um, 
we are we are here to um, help solve urgent um, and global health needs. We can respond to, um, flexibly um, with our vaccine platform. Um, we can respond to new outbreaks of diseases very quickly, um, and we can also produce vaccines cost effectively and much more quickly than would otherwise be the safe uh, be the case. Um, the vaccines are inherently safe and they're stable, and um, they're economical and simple to develop. We're looking for we we have um, I've told you what we've done so far. We're looking to expand into other um, virus vectors. Uh, we've got plans for that, and we're going to do some work in um, veterinary studies. Um, because measles is such a so good at getting into cells, we do we, we believe that this is a, a way of carrying other things into cells. We're interested in potentially, you know, maybe gene therapy approaches and lots of other things. Um, and we're very, very interested in, in collaboration, um, either with people that have got a, a candidate that they would like to try, you know, anyone that wants to try the platform, basically, um, is very, very welcome. Um, and we would love to talk to you if you would like to collaborate um, on uh, new vaccines, new ideas, or, or anything else that you can think of. Um, so thank you again. Um, have I, if I have time for questions, if not, I'll, I'm here at lunchtime.